Hey, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. Great to see you here. Glad you're painting along with us here on this channel. Um, we're going to get right into it here. We're going to practice figure work in a real fun and free type of way where you're not going to be concerned too much about the real like nitty gritty details of figure work, like painting like eyelashes and um, lips and, you know, fine type of things with clothing. We're just going to get the basics of the figure the human form, and what better way than to use our electronic devices, which we use all the time here on my channel. And you can kind of see here, we're going to do three beautiful figure paintings, real simple. We're going to render them simply and efficiently, and you're going to see how fun, it, uh, you know, how much fun it is. It's just really great. So this will be our uh, first figure. We'll do three. So then we'll move on to the next one here. And this one here is a little bit different, but you can see how interesting that is. We captured that basic shape of the, of the human form through this wood carving. These are wood carvings, photographs of wood carvings. And then the last one, which is kind of one that we really did a little more of a creative spin on. We actually had a little more interesting fun here. We tried to create some light and shadow on this one. So here you can kind of see there's some powerful light coming from the right side in the photograph of this uh, wood carving of this human form. And then we kind of tried to do the same thing. So we used a, di a little different technique to try to capture that uh, light and shadowing on this uh, figure here. And I think we really did a great job. And we also kind of planned out our figurine, our wood figure carving here, our painting, so that we fit into the complete rectangle that we were trying to work in. So. I was really careful to try to get everything in from head to toe, including this jar on top of the head here, uh, all the way down to the uh, pedestal or the base of the wood carving. So we got the whole picture completed here, just perfect. And sometimes it doesn't always work out that way, but let's join along here. Grab your brushes, your pencils, your paints, your paper. We're gonna have a fun time, okay? Be right back. Chris Petrie here. Welcome everyone. Let's have some fun here. Let's get excited. We're going to do some figure work and we're going to actually, you just saw one of our finished uh, paintings uh, right at the start of the video here, just so you kind of see what we're going to do for this video. But basically we're going to go through three different figures and we're working from photographs from the internet. And basically we're going to use wood carvings for our subject matter, photographs of wood carvings to get uh, a basic feel for figure work. So if you're just starting out with figures, you haven't done a lot of um, work with portraits or figure work, things like that, this is a perfect video for you to just sort of get yourself kind of acclimated to uh, working with the shapes of the figure, the head, the shoulders, the body, the legs, the upper body, the upper torso of a figure, and in a little more fun atmosphere. You're not trying to copy something from a photograph like a real person. Sometimes, you know, we as artists, we, we see a photograph, we see a painting and it's really detailed and we think, oh, we got to copy everything exactly the way we see it. Well, here it takes the pressure off because really we're not seeing a lot of detail. All we're basically seeing is mostly is the out, the uh, silhouette, let's say, or the um, basic uh, dark and light, back, you know, the light background with the dark shape, which is, you know, negative space behind is light and positive space is the figure. So you're seeing just two basic uh, tones or tonal values uh, for this type of uh, pen, uh, painting or exercise we're doing here, composition. But this might come out fantastic, so always remember, make sure if you're going to do some paintings like this, make sure um, you use your mat, your pre-cut mat that you can buy online or at the art stores, hobby shops, all that kind of good stuff. Um, this way you put it down and you just make sure that your paper is the right size so that if you paint your figure here and it comes out really fantastic, you can put a, a mat over the top and then frame it. And you can put it on your wall or you can give it to a friend as a gift or maybe a gift it to somebody else, maybe at work or uh, somebody that you know that you maybe it's their birthday or some special occasion. You know, always think of that as try to make your, even your compositions we might be doing here on YouTube, let's make them as if we're going to maybe frame them every time. So always remember, pick up a few of these pre-cut mats in different sizes and always just make sure that when you tape off your, your, your working surface, your watercolor paper, when you tape it off, make sure it fits with your 
pre-cut mat sizes, so you can frame it if you'd like to. It gives you that option, and that's important. And I know you're all doing a fantastic uh, bit of work out there, and I'm hoping you'll frame your work, too, when it comes out really good. Obviously, if it doesn't come out so great, we're doing two more of these, so you have three figures we're going to do on this series, and I guarantee you one of them's going to look fantastic, come out just the way you want it, and then you're going to put it into a frame, put a mat on it, and put it in a frame. So let's think of that. And, and let's do that, okay? You're the artist. Think of yourself as you're always a work in progress. You're always going to be getting better, but might as well enjoy the you know your victories as you go. Now is the perfect time to put a pre-cut mat and frame your paintings as you go. If one comes out, pretty good. You know, one that's to your liking. All right, so now we're going to start off. This one, let's do a pencil sketch. Maybe the next one we won't worry about a pencil sketch, but let's do this one first with a pencil sketch, maybe. So I'm just going to take my mechanical pencil and just say, okay, I'm looking at this and it's a kind of like a standard figure, a head, shoulders, and legs, and uh, some feet at the bottom. So let's kind of, let's start out here. Let's give ourselves a little bit of room up top. So we have a little bit down from the top of the, the um, tape we have around our paper. Let's start the head here. And let's just kind of make our head here. So I'm just going to do a head shape like that, an oval. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I'll make it a little darker. Okay, so I'm going to do the head shape like this. And then I'm going to go down and get the shoulders here, like so. And then right away I'm going to try to get the shoulders in here. And the shoulders are about what, what, one head width, one head width, so the width of the head, the shoulders are about one head width to each side. So basically normal, let's just say on average usually they're going to find that shoulders are a little bit larger on males and smaller on female figures, but usually let's say on a male figure your head is going to be, your shoulders will be one head length over to the left and over to the right for your shoulders like that. And then here we have some arms coming down and then these arms are actually holding something but we can't really see so we're not going to worry about that this figure might be holding something in their hands but we're just going to come down and do this and then maybe we're not going to have quite the whole figure in this maybe we're going to um, just we won't have the full figure in here we're going to leave out the feet so we're just going to do the head, the shoulders, and the body, the upper torso, and uh, and then the top of the legs. Maybe like the thighs, maybe the knees are about here on the figure, and the lower legs here. So let's not worry about the entire figure here. We can work as we want and adjust and counter adjust as we go. But let's get the basic idea of trying to just have an enjoyable time creating the basic shapes of a, a human figure. And this happens to be a wood carving and no details really other than basically the, the main figure itself with a negative space background, like a light background and, and dark for the figure, dark tonal values. So I'm going to take my round brush here. So I just have a standard round brush. This is a Charles Reed Travel Series brush actually that we have here. And I'm just going to start getting some color onto my palette. And again, we're um, going to mix some basic colors. We're not going to go with too much uh, variation in color. Let's go with um, Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna. Let's mix in some Burnt Sienna, more blue, maybe a little bit of black too. Mix in some black. Of, this is um, Payne's Gray and uh, Ivory Black. So we'll put a little bit of Payne's Gray and Ivory Black and maybe a little bit of, um, maybe we'll go in with a little bit of uh, Yellow Ochre. So we have a nice mixture of all different kind of beautiful colors, but lots of darks. So that's the French Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Umber. Those are the two darkest darks there in this mix. But we have a nice, wonderful mix of darks here. And then we just have plenty mixed up, and then we can start going in. And then we'll just take our brush and we just set it down on the figure. We'll start at the head, and let's just get our head shape in here. Just like that. 
and we're not going to go for any details other than the basic shape. So now we have our head shape in there. And we're going to pick up some more paint and then we're just going to take our the shape of our shoulders here. And this is a female figure. And we'll come down, we're making some arms here. And then we're not going to get into any details in the central section of this figure. We're just again going with that nice dark wash. So here you're just doing a beautiful dark wash. And you're going to capture some details here. So there's some sleeves there and there's a, a it looks like a blouse of some sort or gown more of like a jacket on the female figure here and then let's keep working down here on the bottom and we're just going to take our brush and just get our you can just move your brush around and you stay within your lines of course And my goal here is to try to keep my brush on the paper for the most part. Like I don't want to keep lifting up and up and down on the as I paint like this. I want to keep my brush on the paper and just swirl around. Just keep working around the, the figure so that I get a nice smooth wash. And that's really a basic, let's say, silhouette type shape of a human form, a female form here. It could be a male form too as well. In this picture here of this wood carving, it does look like, like a female figure if I was to, to guess. I could be wrong though. And uh, so you can do that. And then you can always add a few splashes here just to Make things a little interesting. You know, a couple splashes on. You can lift up a couple splashes with a paper towel or um, tissue. And I wouldn't get too much more than that. I think that is enough that we've had an enjoyable time painting this figure. We got the basic shape of the human form, the head, the shoulders coming down upper torso and then kind of coming down into the lower portion of the body, the legs, the upper legs, the uh, quadriceps, the thighs. And um, this form happens to be wearing, looks like a, a dress of some sort. Maybe this is a religious um, type of um, uniform or s something similar to that. And uh, I think this looks really fine. It looks really, really good. I, I really didn't enjoy doing this figure we're going to do two more, so let's take a quick break though. We'll get ourselves situated with another piece of paper. So while I take a break, uh, I'm going to set up my um, board here with another piece of paper. So I'm going to lift this up off and then set down a new piece of paper. And I'll do that off camera so you don't have, we don't have to, you know, you won't have to kind of sit through me doing a change out of my paper here. That doesn't uh, seem like a very productive thing to do on camera. And then um, we'll get started with another figure. So let's get started in just a second with a brand new figure, something a little more interesting now. So this is kind of a very, we kept it kind of basic. Now the next figure, we might have a figure with more dynamics to it. Maybe, um, maybe the arm is going to be on the waist or on the head, and there's going to be some sort of more interesting um, of a pose for, for this uh, next figure we're going to do. But you'll see what it, what it will be in just a second. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, are we having fun or what? We're having an exciting time here. We're doing figures and we're doing them simple, easy, fun, and uh, straightforward. We're not really getting too much into all the details of eyelashes and nostrils and lips and all these type of things where that can drive you crazy. It, it used to drive me crazy and sometimes it still does drive me crazy. When I'm trying to do portraits and figure work, it, it can be really difficult. It can be really stressful sometimes. So let's do some fun compositions, some practice 
where it kind of takes all the pressure off. You don't have to worry. You can do figures. Figures, anyone can do figures. We all can do figures. Let's just jump right in here and look at the basic shape of this. This is another beautiful wood carving that we have here, and we're just going to be concerned about the light and dark. We get a perfect uh, negative space background here, which is beautiful, bright, you know, or, you know, kind of a light background, quite light. And then we just have our darks, you know, uh, figure here, which is our wood carving, and that gives us really the kind of, you know, fundamental basic outline of the figure and the shape of everything so that we can just get in here and get it done, have a fun time of it, enjoy it, and then we're practicing at the same time while we're having a good time. We're practicing just getting the basic, you know, shape of a human form in, the dimensions basically, a head, shoulders, you know, going down to the waist, and then right, you know, from the waist we're going down into the upper, you know, the thighs and the, and the lower... Uh, portion of the legs, the um, calves, and the, the feet. And so uh, let's just uh, try this next one here, and I think we're going to have a great time. And I'm going to do the, we'll do a pencil drawing again for this one too. And the reason I say that is, if you use the pencil first, doing a super light sketch, you'll be able to fit everything in on your paper first, and then you'll start painting. If you just go in with your paintbrush, um, you could possibly get everything just right, but you're, you have a better chance of getting things more accurate if you do a pencil line first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically do a very, very light, what I call a preliminary sketch, and you'll kind of see this in my uh, other videos. A lot of times I talk about uh, the preliminary sketch, which is basically a super light sketch with your pencil that you do first just to get the basic fundamental placement of your subject matter on your paper within your tr your rectangle here. So we're working with a rectangle here. This is a defined space. You have the space to work within, but you don't have anything else beyond this. This is what you're confined to. So basically when you're starting your composition and your painting, you really have to think of it as you have to get it pretty much accurate with where you want your the placement of your um, subject matter. So you wouldn't want if I just can make a quick observation here, or like a quick, if this is your paper and you say to yourself, I'm not, I'm not going to bother doing a preliminary sketch, maybe. It might be that you'll wind up, if your paper is this big and you don't do a sketch, one of two things can happen, or three things can happen. One, you might start out like this up here. And the next thing you know, all you have is the upper body, the head, and this large bowl up top here, this carrying basket or bowl, and you've missed out on the lower body because you started out a little too large up here. So what I'm making here a point of just saying, if you do a preliminary sketch and really lightly use your pencil, you, you can figure that out before you start painting. So then here, another issue that could happen, which is very possible, is you could start out with your rectangle like this, and then you start out and you make your head like this, and the next thing you know, you have your figure like this. And now you have a problem where you have all that paper under here left over, and some paper over here, so basically you've made things, we've made things a little too small. I've done this too many times, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I've done the same thing uh, before myself and I'm sure I'm going to do it again, where I start out thinking I'm going to get everything just right and I wind up making my subject matter too small within the picture frame, let's say. So this is your picture frame. So that's crucial, you know, your picture frame's crucial. This is the area you have to work in. We have to utilize this space here and really think about it before we go in and start painting. Let's use our light pencil sketch lines to kind of get everything just right. Then we'll go in and paint and that'll make a big difference for you so that you won't really, you know, get like um, kind of bogged down with uh, trying to correct things or trying to erase and redraw things and then erase and redraw. Do your preliminary sketch first, which is your super light sketch. I kind of always mention this. So let's do that. Preliminary sketch, nothing more than, you probably won't even see it here as I'm doing it on this page because my lights are kind of bright for my video camera here. So I'm just going to kind of get the top here. I'm going to do the head here. Let's see how I do. So I'm just kind of just getting the basics of it here. 
And that's pretty close like this here. And then the head's like this, and then we have the shoulder here, shoulder over here, like this, okay, like that. Okay, already I see I've gone off the paper, but I'm not worried about this because I think I want, maybe it looks better if I just kind of make the, maybe I can make the, um, we don't have to worry about the feet maybe. Let's leave the feet off the page and let's just kind of make it more or less, um, all right, that looks good to me. I'm, I'm kind of happy with this and now let's, I'll, I'm going to go in and draw it a little bit darker now so you can see what I did. So I started off up top here, maybe I start with the head shape. I do the head shape first and then the neck here and then there's the arm comes up and then there's the basket above the head and the arm up here. Come down and we have a uh, and then when we come down this way here we have the shoulder and it looks like the arm comes down here and rests on the... We don't have to concern ourselves with anything in here. We're just doing the outside exterior shape of this form. So basically that's the form. And then the, uh, the, the, the bottom of the form is the legs here. Like that. Like that. And then you can kind of maybe do a little fine tuning here. I made a little bit of that little hip area here. So a little bit of a bump out there for the hip. And uh, this is okay. I have like the elbow, a little bit of a bump out there for the elbow. And then we have the head here, which is fine. We're not doing any detail as far as the facial features, even though there's some facial features in there. You might see that. I can't tell what you can see on your cam on, on the video my, right now. Through my viewfinder on my video camera, I really can't see any detail on the face so much. Just a little bit of light, a little bit of light, maybe some shining light on the figure. But again, we're just going for the basic shape of things. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's um, let's see. Let's take a quick break here. Um, we've gotten the preliminary sketch in, like we said, lightly. If we had to, we could have erased a little bit. Um, I'm deciding to leave this um, figure painting my my picture frame is going to end right here at the bottom so i wanted to do it this way basically i could have made it so that you could see the block here i could have drawn in the block that would look interesting maybe you want to leave in this block here when you draw this figure on your watercolor paper i may have started a little too large and i didn't leave myself the option because i kind of started out a little large here so i can critique my own work and say, you know, yeah, I, I did start a little bit too large here, probably. So as I worked my way down, I sort of ran out of page here, or out of picture frame, and then I just told myself, and maybe I lied to myself and said, oh, that's okay. But if I wanted to create this wood block underneath, which would, I think, look really nice, look really good, look exciting, then I would have had to start erasing a little bit. And, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this. I, I'm going to say that I'm Happy with just doing the upper portion of the body and maybe the calves of the figure here. And then I'm not worrying about the feet and the block below. But you could do the full entire um, wood figure, wood carving here if you would like to. So that's up to you. You're the artist. You figure that out. But in the meantime, let's take a quick break. I always mention if you haven't subscribed on the right-hand side below, if you do enjoy my videos and you want to just keep in contact and make sure that uh, you're aware of the new videos that come out each week that I create, which I'm always creating new videos each week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. I've been on YouTube many, many years, over five years now, and I have hundreds and hundreds of videos. You can go back and look at my archives. Simplest way to look at my archives is figure out what your favorite style of painting is, and then you just type in my name, Chris Petri, last name, P-E-T-R-I, and uh, you type in the word, uh, oceans, uh, seascapes, boats, whatever it is, Chris Petri boats, Chris Petri seascapes, Chris Petri figure work, Chris Petri um, 
could be landscapes, uh, city scenes, flower paintings, Chris Petri flower paintings, anything like that. You type that in, you'll see like 20, 30, 40, even more videos on each of those subjects. So you can go back to the archives. If you get bored, let's say, and you want to do some research, I have hundreds of videos on my in my archives here on YouTube. And again, if you're subscribed, you're going to be notified pretty much each time I'm making a new video going forward. So you'll always see my most recent work, what I'm doing. And I'm really happy that you're here um, uh, following along and having a great time with us here. And uh, if it's your first time here, thanks so much for coming by. Welcome. And uh, we're just basically covering the fundamentals of watercolor each and every week. And I always say that if you're just doing, working along with us here each week on these videos that we're working on together, if you're just working each week a little bit, maybe half an hour to an hour each week, um, you're going to learn watercolor because I'm always covering the same fundamental basics every time we're getting together. And I might not cover every detail each video, but invariably each time I do a new video, you're always going to have the same techniques and methods and fundamentals reoccurring over and over and over again. So if you're just watching uh, each week, you're going to learn watercolor after a matter of time. If you're just working a little bit every week, maybe an hour or two, you're going to be fine. You're going to learn watercolor, have a great time with it, have fun with it. And then if you want to go back and look at my other videos, that's fantastic. I also have a new book out. If you want to pick up my new book, um, I uh, have it on Amazon. Basically, it's just simply called Watercolor Methods for Success. And basically, in this book, I have all of my information, all my um, latest and greatest um, paintings, seascapes, landscapes, lighthouses, figures. I do, you know, city scenes, pubs, you name it. Any kind of country scenes, landscape scenes, animals, horses, cows, ocean scenes, buildings, architecture, flowers, tons of flowers here, uh, just still life, you name it, I'm doing it all. And I also have uh, all of my practice exercises that you can do in my book, which is really great. You kind of can drill down on some of the uh, practice things that'll help your skills with your brush and your paints get a lot better. I cover my palettes, all my colors, practice swatches, key uh, fundamentals of watercolor to know about um, in the beginning of the book to start out with. And then all, of course, all of my tools, pencils, pens, paints, paper, everything covered here. So it's basically a whole condensed version of everything I do in one place in my new book. You can get that at Amazon. I'll leave a link below in the description box. And uh, let's get started in just a second and we'll work on this figure. And I know you're gonna have a great time doing this. This is a lot of fun if you're just a little bit leery of doing figure work. This will get you past that point of being kind of, you know, shying away from doing figure work. After this exercise in this video, I think you'll start to do figure work more and enjoy it. Put these in a miniature fashion in your paintings. If you're going to do, let's say, landscapes and city scenes, things like that. Take this type of painting and just shrink everything down into smaller um, version of this for your figures in your paintings, for your landscapes, seascapes, or any type of scene, really. If you want to add figures in there, they're always fun and enjoyable to add figures into your paintings. They look beautiful. They add excitement. And most people, I think, would say that they like to see figures in their paintings. Um, so let's get started in just a second. All right, we are back and let's get started. Uh, I think what we're going to do now is we'll change our colors a little bit. Let's say we're going to go with maybe a more, let's go with a, a black and gold. So I'm going to take some of that uh, Payne's gray and ivory black to get a nice, uh, really dark, dark there. I changed out my water too, so I have fresh, clean water in there. And then let's go with maybe some red, cadmium red and burnt umber. So now we're going to kind of, let's do a little bit different than what we did before. Let's kind of, let's spice this one up a little bit with a little more interesting color. We're going to use some of those, again, ivory black, Payne's gray, French ultramarine blue. And then we're going to add some cadmium red over here and some burnt sienna. And let's see if we can kind of mix these 
you know, four or five colors into this mix and see what kind of a look we get. But again, we're not doing anything more than just basically we're painting within our silhouette of what we created with our pencil drawing. So let's go for it here. I'll start off with the, the head shape here. Like that. Like this. And you can kind of see I'm trying to do this very efficiently. I'm just taking my brush and... Now what I'm going to do here is I might start to incorporate a little bit something more interesting is maybe I'm going to try to incorporate a little bit of light and shadow in this. So maybe I'll make it a little lighter up here on the top of this uh, basket or bowl that's on top of this figure. They're carrying uh, some goods and things in here. Some maybe some food, maybe they're out hunting and they're carrying their food or they're out gathering some plants and things like that for food source. Maybe this is like a African type wood carving. I'm not sure of the origin of the wood carving here. I just found this picture online and on the internet. So can't be positive exactly what it is, but and then let's keep working here. Let's so I'll do the arm here and sort of try to use my brush. Use I'm using my brush to its maximum capabilities here. I'm trying to use it with all the water and paint in there. You could take you could take a uh, tissue and do get a blot a few lights in this painting. So maybe we're going to think of light up here, and then maybe where else would there be light? I take my tissue, fold it up so I don't keep blotting more paint on there. I want to make sure I kind of take my tissue and let's maybe there's some light over here on the arm here. There's some light on the face a little bit. We could do that. Like that. And I rinse my brush off, dry off a little bit of the paint and water on a sponge there. There we go. And then let's get right back into it. I might have to mix some more paint, so I don't worry. I have time here to work. French Ultramine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and there we go, back into the painting with fresh paint. Okay, add a little bit of water to that. Okay, and I'm just going to try to keep my brush going here with plenty of paint and water. Sorry about that, I had a little bit of noise there. And then you can add, incorporate some, some brushwork and flowing lines like this to your, to your composition to make it more interesting if you'd like. And again, these are something you'd probably like to do these often or, you know, as much as you like. But I hope you'll try, you know, work on these maybe or, or have some fun with this and maybe work on this when you're considering doing some figure work and in, in a painting before you start maybe um, creating a painting with figures maybe you'll say I'll maybe I'll practice up on some of these before I do that and then so maybe in a month or two months or six months from now if you're going to be doing a um, figure painting you might say let me practice up on these first with some some of these uh, silhouettes here
How does that look? I just want to smooth this out a little bit. And I'll add a little bit of splashing here. I just want to add a few. You could take a lot of a lot of water and mix it in there and do a couple large splashes. Like that. And then you can always go in and blot up a few. And I had the splashes in there to um, add excitement and something interesting going on in the negative space behind the figure. Um, you don't have to add the splashes in if you don't like, that's fine. Uh, every artist is different. You, you're the artist. You have to decide what you think is interesting with your paintings. And if you find that splashing doesn't work with your technique or your style, that's fine. I never get offended by anyone that wants to do things differently. I always encourage that. Do You're the artist. Uh, take my work. I hope it'll help you to get to the next level to help you to improve your skills. But if you want to take what I'm doing and spin it off in a totally different direction, I, I'm all for that. I'm all for you're the artist. Use your own desires, your your uh, freedoms as an artist and your liberties as an artist to create anything you want. But this is really a fun, like if you really are jazzed about figures and you do some of these and you say, oh, these are great, you know, keep working on them. Who knows? Maybe you'll just do these a lot and you'll start incorporating this into your style of painting quite, you know, quite a bit. Maybe this is something you find is really enjoyable that you really like. I mean, I'm not sure what everyone likes out there. I always get compliments and thank you for all the compliments out there constantly. I realize you're always leaving me really positive, friendly comments and I thank you for that. And, uh, but I never know what each person individually, what you like to do and what your favorite subjects matter. I know everyone likes certain subject matters more than others from just looking at my, you know, positive feedback and things like that. But, but this is something it's so much fun to do. All right. So let's, uh, come back. We'll do one more. And, uh, I think by that time we'll really have a good feel for this kind of a practice and composition technique that we can use just to free up ourselves, have fun doing the figure and kind of get used to the basic shapes of the figure, the head, the arms, the shoulders, the body, the legs, you know, kind of a nice development of the human form. And we're working from a really great subject matter, something that's going to free us up. We don't have to feel like we have to copy every detail on these things. There's not much detail, actually. It's just basically a dark and a light background, just like we're doing here. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, we're up and running again. Let's get started again with our preliminary sketch. We said, if you'd like, eventually after you're doing these for a while, you might not necessarily always want to have to do a pencil sketch, but I'm really mostly trained to always do pencil sketches first when I do my um, drawings and paintings, my paintings I should say. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start out with a pencil drawing. Light, I'm going to do a preliminary sketch first and then go over with a darker line so we can all see it together here. So, but first let me do this. Let me start out here. I'm going to use the whole, let me, let me consider this, let's use the whole picture frame here, our paper. Let's utilize the whole picture space. What we don't want to end up with is maybe, and I always mention this, if we have a picture space, let's say like this, and most of you already know this, but I always mention this for people that are just starting out, because I know every type of person comes onto this channel when I'm working and creating my videos on YouTube. Every kind of person comes in here, some people, and thank you again if it's your first time here, some people come in here for the first time, they've never seen even a watercolor video before, and they're like really intrigued, and they like it, and they watch it, and they want to start watercolor painting, so I kind of try to mention some fundamentals and basics all the time, and so I'm hoping you'll bear with me if you've been here a while, or if you're a, an old grizzled pro, and you've been painting watercolors for 20 years, um, but sometimes you'll hear me just say some of the real basic fundamentals of uh composition and things like that. And I only do it just because there are some people that are just starting out and I don't want them to kind of fall into those pitfalls. So basically, again, if we're working with a piece of paper, a sheet of paper, watercolor paper, 
and we're going to be thinking of our composition and what we're going to do. And then we say, all right, this is going to be our, this is going to be our next figure we're going to do here. And I can adjust this figure. It does look a little bit dark in the background there. Let's see what I can do. Um, I can take this, hit edit, and then I can see if I can adjust the brightness. And I can. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Much better. Okay. Okay, so that's going to be our figure. We're going to do our next figure, our third figure. What we don't want to do is end up with something like this. We don't want to end up with our figure like this. And then we have all this empty space around our paper. That's kind of like really not too... Um, that's not too pleasing and pleasant for someone looking at this painting if they see that we have this giant piece of paper and then we only have a small little small bit of information on the center of it. It looks kind of like, yeah, unpleasant, boring looking, almost like, you've ever seen those pictures when someone takes a picture? Hopefully this doesn't happen to you, but sometimes you're on vacation and you say, hey, can you take our picture? And when you get back home and you look at the photograph and there's this giant picture space, maybe something like this, you have a picture space like this, and the person that took the picture made you and your friend here, you're sitting next to each other and maybe it's your husband, your husband and wife, and you're sitting here and that's all you see is two figures like this and you can't even tell who it is because they left all this empty space around um, the picture. Really what we want to do is focus in on the two people. Maybe like you're, maybe you're sitting and this is like the scene. You'd want to fill up your picture space here with lots of information. So the two figures maybe. If you're on vacation with your friend or your loved one, whatever, and you're having a great time and you, the person taking the picture would, if they had some experience in photography, they would do this. They would zoom in like this. And then maybe take another one too, like this possibly. You know, they might take a, a picture like this too, maybe. If there's a really beautiful background or something with mountains in the background or some ocean. So that can work too. So I don't want to be too critical of people that are taking pictures out there. And, you know, people are nice enough to take our picture. But in any case, let's keep that in mind though. We want to fill our picture space up with lots of information. Let's fill up our... Let's fill up our rectangle here with lots of the beautiful figure that we have here. Uh, so that's how, that's why we do our preliminary sketch. So we kind of get that idea of, let's make sure we're capturing. So here I'm going to say, all right, here's the head. Here's the head. And then we have the bowl on top. And then the arm comes down like this. And the shoulder, there's the neck and shoulders. And there's the, okay. Okay, and then there's the feet. And let's even get in the, uh, the bottom here, the, the uh, pedestal that this carving is on. So I'm going to do that too as well. And, uh, It's a little bit out of the picture frame here, but it's it's down here, and we'll look at it later. I'll show you the bottom of the picture. All right, but this looks good. All right, so we have the... Beautiful wood carvings, too, that these are. Photographs of wood carvings. They look really fantastic. And uh, I think we... I think we have I think we have a good And then again, let's say, hey, you know what? I'm just noticing that my arm and elbow didn't come out perfect the way I'm looking at it in this photograph. That's fine. You can get a kneaded eraser. And again, you might not be able to see this sketch all that great, but I'm going to try to go over with a darker line in just a second. Bear with me here. So here I'm going to say that I, I want to get this a little bit better here. 
like this. I get that elbow a little better. And I think that looks good. And again, we're not concerned about any of the light and shadow and details of this, although you could develop that more if you like. So this is something where we're just going for the dark and the light, the negative space in the background, and then the silhouette of the figure with all dark paint. If later on you want to go in and do some more work on your compositions like this, feel free, do it. Maybe you can get in some of the uh, darker and light shadows of this scene with some darker eye sockets and shadows under the nose and light on top of the bridge of the nose and the lips. And so you can have fun with this, develop it further than what I'm showing here, but I'm just trying to get the main idea of this kind of exercise for you so that we all work together with each other. We get the basic idea of what we're doing here and then you can further develop it. You're the artist. You can further develop things as you go. So here I'm going to work with a little bit of a larger brush now. So I'm just going to bump up to the next size up. So this is a um, number 10 travel brush, a Skoda travel brush, Charles Reed series. And the first one we were working with on the first two paintings was a number eight, a number eight size of uh, watercolor brush. And this is the number 10 size brush. So it works pretty good. It's seems to fit this a little better. This is a little bit larger of a sheet of paper. This is actually hot press paper here. The first two sheets of paper I used was cold press, which is more like um, rough paper, rough texture paper. This is smooth texture paper right now I'm using. This is um, arches paper. The first two paper uh, sheets of paper I used were Fabriano, Artistico. Let me pour out some fresh, clean water. And then uh, let's, we've been using some warm colors, very warm colors. Let's continue with that, but let's add some cool colors too. So cadmium red, burnt sienna, burnt umber over here. Then some blue, cooler colors, the blue, French ultramarine blue. And then maybe over here, let's add some uh, cerulean blue. Let's add some coolness, a little more coolness than we used before. And we're also going to use a different technique here. What we're going to do now is we're just going to develop another technique on this method, method and technique for this style by, um, let's dampen this whole figure with clean water first. So I'm going to use a damp brush with clean water. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this whole figure here, which is the head. I'm going to swing around here and get some damp brush strokes on top of the arm here. So I'm painting with a damp brush here and the same thing over here. I'm going to fill in this figure with clean water and just get a damp wash on everything with clean water before I start painting with colors. And then we're going to see what happens. We're going to try to Try a little bit different uh, technique now. Okay, so we've done that. And I think we'll have a good result here now that we work with this damn paper like this. Let's try to go in and see what happens. Let's take some warm and cool colors and just... Can you see how we have a little bit of fun with this? This is watercolor, so watercolor, we can let it really do what it loves to do, which is flow around on the paper and uh, like that, and some warm and cool. So we have the warm and cool colors, of course, the reds and the blues, and then as we go, we can shape things a little better, like so. Okay, and then we'll get some darker darks here, maybe. As we get down toward the bottom of the figure, maybe we do some darker darks. Burnt umber in the blues down here.
And there's a darker shape under here. And then we might look and see there's some darker darks here and then it's a little bit lighter. And we'll do some darker darks there. So you can actually add some darks and lights here. Some light and shadow. And then we can blot up a little bit if we want. So down here at the bottom, I'm just going to blot up a little bit where the feet are at the pedestal. And then French ultramarine blue, burnt umber to get that really, really super dark. And I'll try to put that super dark at the bottom of this, and then over here too. So you add a little bit of, um, you know, contrast. Contrast looks great with painting, with watercolor painting especially. So when you can add beautiful uh, contrast to your paintings with darks and lights, um, you will definitely notice a big difference in the beauty of your artwork if you can get those darks and lights in. So again, I'm trying to now, as my painting is starting to dry, I'm going to start doing my darker darks now. So I've got the medium tonal values completed. And now I can just add in a few punctuations of darks as the painting starts to dry. And then like we said before, you know, you can add some eye sockets if you want. And a few details. Um, you know, I try to do things sparingly. I don't want to kind of make this look a little bit um, too detailed because that might give us a problem where it might not look that beautiful and, and really pleasing looking if we start to add odd looking shadows and things. So I think um, very subtle details might be okay like that. And again those bits of dark and you've seen that I've just I've had an issue with uh, a few with some smudges but smudges are okay a couple splashes then we go in we grab a tissue and we say all right Let's maybe lift up a few splashes here and there. And again, if that's not your favorite thing to do, don't splash and splash on your, your paintings if, if you don't like to. If you like the splashes, you do it. If not, leave them out. Okay, and then I'll do this. I'll put this back like that. Okay, so there we go. So we added a little more detail to this one, but not overdoing it, of course. Um, we added some lights and shadows here a little bit. You can kind of see we did a little bit of dark shadows under the chin, underneath the, um, uh, it looks like a container of some sort, like a clay pot on top of the head here. So um, I see that I might have needed to do a little more uh, a little more uh, detail up here like that I might have just added a little bit too much um, or I left out a little bit of a detail there and then there's some more so you can get some darks here so you can kind of as you go as you're finishing up your composition you can add a few darks like that clean up a few spots that might look a little bit um, rough edges if you want, let's say.
but I don't want to keep going and then sort of have a problem with adding too much detail, but you can kind of see here. I try to smooth out a few of these. I try to just smooth out a few spots here and there. But don't get too, I would say it, it looks better sometimes when you just leave it kind of the way it happens instead of maybe trying to do too many touch-ups that sometimes can ruin a painting real easy. So let's leave it as it is. It looks fine. Okay. All right. So I hope you had a lot of fun on this video. Again, the whole point I wanted to kind of create was an atmosphere of just having fun, enjoying creating the human form. We took, instead of trying to work from a photograph and using like, let's say a, a photograph of a person um, and, you know, just normal clothes or maybe a dress or some pants and a shirt and tie, whatever, you know, something like that. Let's work from something much more rude, uh, you know, more like a crude, um, not rude, but crude, a crude um, style subject matter, which is a, car a wood carving, which is beautiful. These wood carvings that I found online on, on the internet look absolutely incredible. So whoever I, I would say, you know, my, my praises are to the person that carved these. These are beautiful carvings of, of, of figures here. And I think they're from African descent. So in any case, have fun with this. Enjoy the process. Uh, and we're going to see you on the next video very soon, okay? Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.